Hello everyone and welcome to this lab session. In this session we will look at how CloudWatch alarms work in AWS. So when you land on your dashboard for CloudWatch, you will see an option over here that says to create alarms. So we will go to create alarms option. As of now we do not have any alarm. So we will go ahead and create our first alarm. So first you need to select a metric on which you want to create alarm for your AWS CloudWatch. So we will select a metric and in here we have options for all of these metrics that are available so it shows you that for api gateway there are 20 metrics for application elastic load balancers you have 191 metric for backup you have 12 so we will go for the ec2 instance over here i will go to the per instance metrics and then you have multiple options over here so right now what i will do is i have an ec2 instance over here that is up and running which is for the rds so I will go ahead and create an alarm for this EC2 RDS instance. So here you will see that this is the EC2 RDS and over here we will select the CPU utilization for the alarm. Let's select this one. So the basics for creating alarm for each and every metrics that are available is the same. So we will select this metric and you can see that this is the maximum CPU utilization. And right now the statics are the average statics so you can actually sum it maximum minimum sample count and all the options that are over here and the sampling time period right now is five minutes so this is the default available in the free tier so if you go for less than five minutes like 10 seconds would be ideal but that would cost you more so it is recommended that you go for the five minutes interval so you will go with the five minute default interval which is available in the free tier as well and then you have the threshold type either you want it to be static or anomaly detection so we will go with this static one and then over here as you can see that we know whenever this rds ec2 instance tries to connect with the rds database so in that case it utilizes the cpu more than 10 percent so what i will do is i will select a threshold from these available option and we have greater than option we have greater or equal to option lower equals option and the lower option what i will do is i will select the greater or equal option and I will give the default value as 10 over here. So you can see that it shows you that any value that goes above this red line will generate an alarm for us. So this 10, right now you can see that it is not above 10, so it won't generate an alarm for us. But what I will do is I will create this alarm and then I will go to the AC2 instance and then try to connect it with the RDS database. So that will utilize the CPU more than 10% and then we will see if we get an alarm. So, for the safe side what I will do is I will keep it above 8. You can have any value of your choice. And then there are some additional configurations as well. So we will be keeping all of these as default and click on next. So then it asks you that when do you want this alarm state to trigger. So we will have an in alarm option which means that whenever the value moves above the threshold that we just set will generate an alarm for us. And then it asks you for an SNS topic. So it is a simple notification service. You can actually have an email as well. Like whenever the threshold goes above that, you can generate an email and that email lands in your inbox so that you know that the value is going above or below a particular threshold that you have set. So what we will do is we will create a new topic and let the topic name be EC2 RDS utilization email. So this will be my topic name. And then I will give in my email for where I want this email to arrive. Let's create this topic. All right. In the same way, if you want, you can also add more notifications. We are okay for now. And then you have the auto scaling option. We do not want this. So basically in the EC2 action, what you can do is you can add an EC2 action. So you have the option to actually go ahead and perform an action on whatever the threshold moves above. So you can actually, if you want, you can stop this instance if the value moves above the threshold you can terminate this instance or you can reboot this instance as well you can see that how manageable this cloudwatch service is basically and in the same way you can also go for the auto scaling option as well so what this will do is if it passes a threshold it can auto scale your ec2 instances as well we won't be going into all these details but the thing is you must know about all of these services so we will keep rest of the things as default and then click on next Meanwhile, just to let you know, I've also received an email for the AWS notification. So I will confirm my subscription so that I receive all of these emails. So the subscription is now confirmed. 
so we will give this alarm a name so this alarm is ec2 alarm for cpu utilization and then click on next so now you can see that the value that if it goes above 8 it will create a alarm for us so let's go ahead and create this alarm all right so right now it shows you insufficient data because the reason is five minutes haven't passed so you can see that within the five minutes it will actually get the data points for us so what i will do is in the meantime i will go to the ec2 instance try to connect to this instance and connect to my rds database so that there is some cpu load that is being loaded onto the cpu so i'll just clear it out and this is the command to actually connect with the RDS database. So I will disconnect it. And over here, I have connected with my database right now. I will simply run some random commands so that it gets some load. All right, so let's refresh it and see the state is okay. So it has started receiving some data. And then let's wait if we receive some email. So if you just go to the alarm notification over here, you can see that still the value haven't reached above the threshold. So I will just pause the video over here and after 5 minutes I will resume it again and show you how the notification service works and how you can get an alarm notification. And here you can see that I have just run some commands so that the execution goes well above the threshold that we have set. And here you can see that we set the threshold to 8 but it reached to 70.5 for some reasons as I use some extraordinary commands to do that and in the same way it triggered an alarm and as you know that we set it an email notification for this particular thing so over here you can see that it gives you an ec2 alarm for cpu utilization that we just set this was our subject and then it gives you all of the information related to what the event occurred actually so with this i hope you have got an understanding of how you can use aws cloudwatch service in order to create alarms for your different metrics available inside your aws account